Hello dear gamers, Yorkfield here and today we are back for the fourth episode of my playthrough on Doki Doki Literature Club or DDLC. So, last time I don't exactly remember what happened compared to other episodes where I remembered what happened last time. <laughs> I'm sorry. So if you saw my last short saying what happened to the DDLC playthrough, I had to actually re completely reset my laptop due to some issues. I won't say too much because everything is explained in that short, so go ahead and watch it now. But yeah, today I managed to get back to exactly where I was in my uh, last playthrough. So yeah, we are now back on the fourth episode of the game. Let's get into it. Ah uh, yeah, I remember. We had to write another poem. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go quick this time. Not too quick because otherwise you won't. It, it will not make sense otherwise. So, uh, friends. Awesome. Email? <laughs> email. What's the point of putting email? Happiness. Uh, no, not chocolate, not skirt. Uh, uh twill? Hmm. No, not love because I don't love Sayori. She's just my best friend. My best tomodachi, as said in Japanese. Hmm. I'm gonna say lucky. Okay. So yeah, it was for Sayori. Because you know, I'm always writing for Sayori. <laughs> I am inside the story right now. So yeah. Think of me as being the only character of the story as a boy. Uh, pure. Heart. Cheer. Giggle. Doki Doki! <laughs> they put the word Doki Doki inside the poem choice. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. <clears throat> so, passion. Whoa, okay, they put pain in there. Comfort. We, oh, oh my god, I saw the word death. Wow, right above the word I selected. Wow. Oh my gosh, okay. Pleasure. Cute. Peace. <gasps> Suicide, what the fuck? Well, I'm sorry for swearing, but wow. Why do they put such words? What the hell is going on? Okay, the video just started and it's already creeping me out. Nature. Hair. Cheeks. Music. Uh, ambient. Okay, that was it. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Yorkfield. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in a club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. <laughs> That's not like you at all! I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. <laughs> <laughs> no reason! Oh, I hate when I say that, and I hate people saying, No reason! <laughs> okay, let's continue. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, ah! Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. 
But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Ooh, uh, I give up! Oh, what the fuck happened to your face, Sayori? <laughs> your eyes! <laughs> Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you feel to- you deserve to feel guilty. <gasps> what am I saying, guys? <gasps> Yuri suddenly giggles. Oh my god. <laughs> That's- she scared me a little bit. Eh? I didn't know that she was listening in. Her face isn't her book, as always. Ah! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Yorkfield to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh... <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution? That... Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <gasps> oh my god, she mentioned the devil! Wow, I think I found an easter egg, guys. <laughs> don't, let, don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have to come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. What? Just for me? <laughs> Just for me to come into the literature club, okay. Wow, she's so nice. <clears throat> she's so nice to think about me. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <sighs> wow! Oh my god, that scared me. Wow. Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Ah! A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <gasps> Natsuki jump scare! What? <laughs> Why? They suddenly pop into this onto my screen. Wow. I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Ha ha ha. Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. <laughs> she is hugging the cookie. <laughs> I don't know if I would do this myself. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Oh, good. Mm. Sayori suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue! Okay, oh, good. guess what, guys? That happens to me too sometimes, and I really hate it. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, you all look really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori greets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Wait, she's hugging Natsuki now? Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. <laughs> Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Ooh. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. <laughs> Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. 
Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's probably popular after all. Ah! You don't think she... She has a... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worrying or anything. <laughs> Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh, that makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, your field. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a lot, a whole lot recently, and I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayuri's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Yorkfield, Yorkfield. Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff, so I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, you're going with Yorkville to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'll be happy to go with him. Ah, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Yorkfield? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make for an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yup. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Yorkfield, you're not thinking about the about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final juice of moment between my fingers. But what to what ends I have summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me, is but a warm wasteland? Like that! Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? 
You mean it? I'm working super hard on this, you know? Ah, I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Ah, <laughs> don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, uh, I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Yorkfield, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in, the, in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Crayons is actually a French word since uh, in French we say crayon and crayon means a pen. So yeah, it's a transparent word. Sayori pulls a box full of crayons in the shelf. <laughs> They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, <laughs> reading the color names. <laughs> Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we'll still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. <gasps> oh my god, that scared me again. Yeah! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill at all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead! Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori! That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her hang bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry, there's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Yorkfield? Where would you... Where would I even find ice around this time? Ah, I guess a cold drink will do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a little silly joke. Uh, what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay? I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I look at the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bowl of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the ball against the bump on her head. It stings! Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Yorkfield. This kind of reminds me you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, yeah, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time. I would always keep, try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes, when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. Ah, uh, And you would rush over as quick as you could. You wouldn't... You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and you were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it... 
really wasn't your fault at all, you know. Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess that was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in that, in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Yorkfield? I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're just rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me like that! And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right, Yorkfield. I'm so glad nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll cat, cat each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to take any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it until my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't sit up so fast after hurting yourself. Uh, well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs trying to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we'll make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing, I was just about ready to start with sharing our homes. Eh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with the crayon and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh, uh I have it right. Eh? Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Yorkfield. Ah, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Ah, uh -huh, okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayons box is closed tightly, I'll return to my seat. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back in the next episode to continue DDLC. Stay safe, take care of you, peace, bye!